Well, just over two weeks until the coronation of King Charles. So is the country and the world in the grip of royal fever? Well, not quite. When it comes to street parties, 16,000 were organised for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, but there's only been 361 applications for the coronation. This is reflected in a new poll, with 35% of Brits saying they don't care very much about it, 29% saying they don't care at all. Well, nearly 1,400 people expected to take part in Not My King protests. World leaders like President Biden and top pop stars have also been snubbing the coronation. Um, here's the White House's press secretary diplomatically trying to explain why. The president uh, had about a 25-minute, 30-minute call with uh, King, King, uh, King, King Charles III, and during which he congratulated the king. And they have a very friendly uh, conversation. They have a, a, a good relationship with the king. He talked about uh, how he enjoyed meeting, uh, visiting uh, the queen, I should say, back in 2021. The king offered uh, for him to come and do a state, a state visit, which, which uh, the president accepted. And, uh, and so they will see each other again again very soon and uh, I'll, I'll just leave it there. Have you ever heard a lamer, lamer or more tortured excuse for why the President of the United States isn't coming? So has the crown lost its shine? Well, joining me now is author and historian Tessa Dunlop and King Charles's former butler, Grant Harrell. So welcome to both of you. Um, all right, Tessa, off you go. Has it lost its luster, the crown? I think we've maybe got royal ceremonial fatigue. The Queen, God bless her, lived a very long time, so we had a golden jubilee, mm. we had a diamond jubilee, we had a platinum jubilee, we had a thumper of a funeral. And now the air's come out of the machine. And, you know, Piers, I missed you when you are in America, but I'm going to give some of the blame to people like you and people in the press peddling this kind of divisive narrative, making the scars in the royal family deeper than they really oh, needed to rather be. rather than the people doing TV interviews and best-selling books trashing the royal family, who happen to be members of the royal family. They're not to blame. Of it's course. us reporting that, on the trashing that's the problem. That's this is, it's a bit control. like Prince Harry saying, I never accused the royals of being racist, even though we all heard what him and Oprah, uh, him and Meghan Markle told Oprah Winfrey. No, it was the beastly media who for two years falsely reported it as racism until we've now corrected them. It's so good that you haven't lost your pizzazz yeah, on the other side of the Atlantic. The such, point being... Tessa, and, it's such horse manure. It's not, Let me bring Grant. in Grant. Grant. What do you feel about our coverage? Grant, you, you, you work with Prince Charles, uh, yes. now, now King Charles. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm excited by the coronation. I am. And I think that the public probably will come round quite quickly, as they tend to do for these things. I think there'll be a lot of fervour building up to the coronation itself in that week. And I think we'll be surprised by the scale, actually, of celebrations for this. It's the first coronation in my lifetime and most people's yeah. lifetime. Well, the first coronation in 70 years. And I've always said that with the Queen, obviously, we all, most people loved her, we respected her. As you mentioned, she had many jubilees and celebrations. This is a fuss for the King. You know, it's, it's a beginning for him with his new reign. And as you've said, it takes time. But I think, you know, I know there's saying popularity polls and everything, but from the people I speak to, people I know, a lot of people like him, admire him, respect him. Um, but so you're in the royal bubble, so is Piers. You're in this I'm not in any bubble. royal bubble. We are in a bit of a cushion bubble where we hear all about the coronation, drip-fed into our inboxes. Oh, this is happening. Oh, that chair's being polished. Oh, she's wearing that mm. crown. Actually, it's quite there exciting. Is, but, but it is for you. <laughs> I mean, partly because it butters your bread, and why not? But, but beyond the, the sort of central London chatterboxes, who's this really speaking to? You know, in Europe, can you tell me when the last coronation was in Europe? I don't care. Well, I care. 1922, Piers. So? What is Britain doing still wandering around with baubles in a cost of living crisis? I think that the apathy Because actually, the monarchy, the monarchy remains something that the vast majority of this country still respects. And you can have a monarchy. And like and have. And I, I think the, the trouble is, you see, you being a, a key supporter of the Duke and Duchess no, of... what such of, misrepresentation. Of, ..of whining, what, the damage that they've done, Grant, I think is actually quite calculable now. Well, you can see a lot of the reaction, especially in America, I've just been, a lot of them saying, yeah, the trouble with the royals is they're racist, aren't they? And they're callous and they're horrible because Harry says so. I mean, it's really quite been quite it's, marked it's, and damaging. It's certainly been uh, upsetting. I mean, I, I felt sorry for the Queen because obviously at the end yes. of her life, this is what was all going on. While Philip was um, dying, while was she dying. was dying. I, I agree. There's these two and yapping away pouring more and more could, could manure you, over them. Could you imagine if it was a former staff member doing it? You know, it would be shut yes. down. It just wouldn't happen. But um, can we be honest, Grant? I bet you and Piers, certainly Piers, if I know you even one iota, 
was just an eensy weensy bit disappointed that Meghan isn't going to be at that concert. Why? I don't I, think. No, I, I think. I tell you why I'm disappointed. I'm very disappointed Harry's going to be there. I'm very disappointed that Charles, although I completely understand it as a father, why he's felt the need to do this. He doesn't want to be seen to be the, the bad guy in the, in the whole thing. But what the hell is Prince Harry doing? Having trashed the family in that, that horrible book he wrote, the terrible series they've done, the interviews they've done, trashing, 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 damaging the institution of the monarchy, damaging the royal family, and then they have the brass neck. He turns up at the coronation. Well, we know, I think, and we know why he's doing it. By the way, we know why he's doing it. He's doing it because I suspect Meghan Markle has gone, you better get over there and get on that balcony somehow because our entire commercial world depends on you still being a, a dominant member of the royal family. Let's take a, let's take a reality check on the idea of money in the commercial world when today we've just seen it released after a comprehensive investigation by The Guardian. The king is the richest royal ever seen by mm. world kind. Is it 1.8 billion pounds? The sovereign doesn't have to pay inheritance tax. Mm. You can feel a bit of sympathy for Harry. He's been totally I have, I zero, I know, I zero, I zero. It all goes Queen, Charles, no, because William. Charles, because... That's where our national wealth yeah, goes. I, I, they should be paying is, for the is coronation. It, no, not donating some money. I'm sure I read somewhere that he's, he's donating some of the wealth mm. uh, or something. Um, you know, and I know, I, you know, you could argue about the amount of money they've got, but at the end of the day, I think they're good value as well. I think what he does, totally. the work they, they do... they don't pay any inheritance um, tax. They're living in a different fantasy land. They're members us, of, a, of an institution which actually one -off, pays for itself. Really? The tourism money that comes in alone pays for the costs of us upkeeping the royal family. I get it's that, but if you got to hand your mansion to your children, they could pay for themselves. They play by a different set of rules. Yes, they do. Which is why we judge yes, them they do. And with by a the different way, set of rules. And in return, they live in this endless goldfish bowl. They don't have a lot of the freedoms that we enjoy. And they do an unbelievably large number of duties a year, which, mm -hmm. by the way, your two heroes over in California, not my heroes. they do zero. They do zero. All they do is take their royal titles and sign massive contracts with companies who only want them for one thing, to trash the family again, which is what they keep doing. And that's my argument against them. But maybe the bigger argument is, if the coronation is a bit pared down, if it doesn't deliver the razzmatazz that some people expect of it, Maybe that's a reality check. We go forward, but with a pair down. Yeah, but the one Smaller thing this country... The one, one thing, that we don't look, the one thing, all the time. Once we've gone through the... In my, I mean, I voted against it, so I can say this. Once we've gone through the ridiculous farce of Brexit, which is just clearly not working and is actually damaging the country, and we're now how many years after it? I mean, seven, eight years seven. after the vote, right? So I just see no evidence of this thing working. Um, so we've become ever more insular. And people look at us and they see Boris Johnson, rid ridiculous, Liz Truss, ludicrous... We become a laughing stock. The one thing that we do better than any other country in the world is pomp, pageantry, yeah. military ceremony, and we're putting the whole shebang on in two weeks' time. And it's a moment for the light of the world to shine on our country, and we can feel proud about and it. And it picks people Rather up. than feeling ashamed and embarrassed because Boris has done something stupid okay, again, but, or Liz Truss has tanked global but, but, markets, right, or whatever it may be. But, 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 Piers, if we want to feel proud again, then let's take away the bile, let's draw away the soap opera, the and let's just enjoy it. The bile is coming from Harry and Meghan. But no, because we stoke it. It's Look constant, at us talking about we're it. We're not stoking it, they're doing it. Let's join together. I'm the happy, the by media, the way. The media I've... can't ignore two members of the royal family publicly trashing the royal family. It's obviously a huge news story. But They've got to stop it. Can I also say with a coronation, any big celebration with the royal family, it brings people together. That's one thing I've noticed. Yes. Look at them out. Look now. at them out. Only and also, people. each year they bring in over 500 million from the tourist industry. Can you imagine what they're going to bring in with the coronation weekend? The amount of people are going to huge, be Huge. Absolutely the, the huge. The great news is, Harry goes home after the show on the that Saturday. That is good news, And yeah. I've kept my Sunday free for lunch mm. with you, Piers. No, the good news is, he is going straight home. <laughs> uh, and that is his home. His home now is in Montecito in California in a massive mansion he got because he sold his family out. There's a word for that, and it's called traitor. Anyway, lovely to see you again, Tessa. Nice of you to make your comeback on our show. Uh, and good to see you too. Uh, good to see you.